Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our inaugural Market Moment. I'm Anthony Valeri, Director of Investment Management in Wealth and Fiduciary Services. Today, we'll talk about the recent rise in inflation and its impact for investors and financial markets. So let's get right into it. The Consumer Price Index measure of inflation jumped in April. The overall and core CPI both jumped to their highest levels in years. For the core CPI, it was the highest since 1996. And for the overall CPI, the highest since 2008. In the aftermath of this report, Fed officials have continued to stress that this report or inflation generally is transitory. And the initial data would suggest that that's true. Less than 10% of the CPI index was responsible for about half of the gains in the increase in April. But with more and more companies announcing wage increases, it's very likely that this inflation increase sticks with us for longer than even the Fed anticipates. So why is that a problem for investors or a potential challenge? Well, higher inflation is generally associated with lower equity valuations. And if you go back through history, specifically back to 1950 and take it to through today, the P.E. ratio, one of the more common measures of valuations, is lower for a given level of inflation. So as you move to the right on this chart, the higher the inflation rate, the lower all else week will the P.E. ratio has been for the S&P 500. That's particularly relevant today when valuations are elevant across the board in the equity market. And it's also particularly high for the technology sector, which has suffered its own bout of volatility and lagged the broader market here recently. So higher inflation does pose a challenge to the equity market, and it's something worth monitoring. However, it's not all about inflation. The equity market is, has come from a very strong, has made a very strong run since the March 23 low. We also have higher interest rates. But again, inflation is one aspect where we think that the set poses a challenge to the markets. If we look to what does this mean historically, it's not something we'd avoid investing in equities in the past. In fact, stocks have actually managed gains during periods of rising inflation in the past. The Consumer Price Index has had six bouts over the last 45 years where it has trended higher over a multi-year period. You can see those listed here, and the average change in the CPI from low to high has been anywhere from 2.4% to 6%. In all six of those cases, however, on the far right, you see the S&P 500 has managed an average gain of almost 9%, with only one of those six years negative, down 2.7%. So uh, inflation by itself does not mean you should avoid investing in stocks. We would view this more as a headwind to equities on top of strong performance. Inflation may provide a headwind and mean lower returns going forward. But as challenging as this has been for, or potentially challenging for stocks, it is a bigger threat for bonds. One of the primary valuation metrics for bonds is the inflation adjusted yield of a bond. In this case, we're looking at the real or inflation adjusted yield of the 10 year treasury. And it has fallen back down to some of its, its lowest real yield since March, 20, since March of 2020, right at the peak of the pandemic. So the valuation outlook for bonds very negative based on this data. Again, we don't expect a repeat of the first quarter in the bond market here in Q2 or beyond, but it does pose a challenge. And we still think that stocks are a much better bet for investors over the longer term versus bonds. So we wouldn't change our outlook here. It's more of a lower return takeaway for investors. Thank you for joining our inaugural market moment. I'm Anthony Valeri. We'll look forward to speaking to you again soon.